Well, good morning. Uh, today we're gonna, I'm gonna unbox, should unbox because I already took a, a quick pick. I couldn't, I couldn't hold my uh, desire to look at it. But um, we're gonna work with uh, the Unify building to building bridge. Uh, it's a 60 gigahertz uh, bridge, two pieces, and uh, it works with the Unify system. That's mainly why, why I'm uh, getting it and, and trying it out. Uh, I'm replacing uh, a prior building to building uh, connection that I have. And, uh, uh, but this one, what entices me or what, what I like about it is that it, I can fully manage it or see it see it in the Unify uh, controller. Uh, honestly, uh, with the other one, uh, which is also a ubiquity uh, one, uh, the good thing about these uh, this bridge connections is that they're pretty stable. They, uh, they work, I mean, you set them and you, you know, they, they, they just pretty much work. Uh, but I just wanted to go to the extra step. And of course, this is a new technology, a new uh, circuitry, uh, 60 gigahertz with a five gig uh, backup. Uh, the current one that, ha that we have is a five gig only. So yeah, w there's there's up updates to this one, upgrades to this one. Uh, so I'm just curious about, you know, how the whole interface works uh, within the uh, Unify uh, controller. And uh, also kind of compare, uh, so this is supposed to be, uh, uh, be able to, to handle faster speeds. So I'm gonna be able to test that as well. But today we're gonna to basically just do a quick unboxing uh, and configure it within the controller. And then uh, we're gonna go through the setup uh, later in the week or so. So I'll make a separate video for that and the comparisons and so on. But uh, as of now, I just wanna get it out of the box and uh, get it configured and see what it looks like within the Unify controller. Here is the biggest thing. When I open up this box, Look at the size of this. It's just tiny. Uh, the other one is about twice the size, uh, which was already a, a pretty um, small uh, unit, uh, to be quite honest, uh, compared to what you know prior iterations or, or other uh, manufacturers. I mean, they, you have to have a, a larger unit. But hey, this is what I've got. is even smaller than the. And then all of the Unify Wi-Fi access points. So, uh, hey, you know, hey, it's it's progress in technology. But basically, you get uh, two pieces. Uh, one is going to be a, a sending, uh, or the what, what you will call the access point side, and the other the other side is going to be the client side. And it does come with a, with a POE. This is a AF, that is 48 volts, uh, which is neat because uh, we can basically just power it straight out from one of our switches. Uh, ubiquity switches that, that also have PoE. Uh, here's the other side. So basically you get uh, two of the same with uh, its mounting uh, accessories so that it can be mounted on a pole. So that's what we got. So I'm just gonna connect this through power to a PoE and uh, uh, and then I should be able to see this one. All right, so uh, I'm just gonna connect one of them. We're gonna go now back to our uh, controller. And by the way, my phone had notified me that a new UBB device was found because I have the Unify app on my phone, but I wanna do it on the computer because we can see more, uh, more of the setup and so on. Okay, so we're here on the Unify controller and both of them just went to the switch, one to PoE and I'm aiming them to each other. So I'm gonna try to adopt. There it goes. So there's one that is, that should be though, set up as the access point and the other one should be set as the client side. From what I'm gathering, you have to have both of them connected here is really telling me about an upgrade. Now the upgrade seems to be going. That's a good thing. Seems like once it detects one of them or, or detects them connected properly, it handles the connection that the two of them, they're not gonna be shown as a separate device. So I already have connectivity of the two devices, but the upgrade, uh, I guess the firmware upgrade failed. That's 
what it tells me here. I'm going back to the devices and there it is. I, it's, I went ahead and tried to, I'm trying to update it again, but we're going to wait on that. So while the upgrade goes on here is, I see now blue on this side as well as the opposite side. So they're already uh, seeing each other. No problem. This is just, again, this is just a temporary setup. Then we'll be taking this upstairs to where we have the, the prior connection and we'll test it. But uh, we're in the process of upgrading the firmware. And there you go, that one just restarted. Uh, so I'm assuming it's trying to apply the, the firmware update. Uh, and uh, we'll just see, but uh, good learning experience here. That one just restarted as well. We'll see. So we're back here in our controller and here we go. We have the UBB. We don't see any issues with <clears throat> firmware updates missing or so. And uh, as I thought, <clears throat> they don't show us a separate uh, entity, like each device will be shown separately, like all the other access points that you see here or switches and so on. Um, but in this case, <clears throat> for the UBB, it's one single uh, and, uh, device or, or entry on, on, uh, on the actual controller. So here they are. Uh, you'll see the access point side and the station side. Uh, so that's basically, and I'm just gonna go through, uh, through what you see here. There's honestly not so much, uh, but it's kind of like the same thing that you see with any other access point. So basically we will provide you the IP address, MAC address, <clears throat> the connection on, on the switch that's um, where it's uplinking to. Uh, let's see what, what else we have here. Access point, uh, wireless, I mean, that's okay, 190. So that's most likely the MAC address of the other device, which we will see also in, in another uh, selection. So we're going to go to the radios, and basically we have the 5G and the 60G connection. The 60G is the one that it's supposed to give us the higher throughput. So uh, that's uh, one of the main reasons why I got this one versus the old uh, bridge connection. So we're gonna to go to the configuration section, actually to the yeah, configuration section where you can just basically rename if you're gonna have more than one access point. So we're gonna, I'm gonna call this later. <coughs> so uh, let's see what else there is. Just the color of the LEDs. I don't wanna change that. On the station LED as well. You can actually change that if you wanna color code them. Uh, that's neat. Uh, VLAN, so management VLAN is default. And that's the one thing I want to know, what behind it, how a switch is going to behave, how other devices and access points are going to uh, transfer uh, or translate VLANs over to the other side of the bridge. Uh, I know with uh, my prior one, I didn't have much luck. I had to just stick with one VLAN as the main VLAN port, and then just everybody else would be under that same VLAN. <clears throat> so we have that. Uh, this is just basically network settings. The radios. Uh, okay, so here we can actually configure if you find a, I'm uh, having a conflict with. This one for the five gigs, it's, it's using the, the full uh, VHD80 uh, bandwidth. Uh, so that's something that we might need to, oh, actually, that's not even something you can configure. Okay, did, uh, let me go back to that. To access this AP radio settings directly, please exclude it from global AP settings. Okay, so I got it. I would have to change in the global AP settings if I want to change this. Uh, we, we'll see that through trial and error later on, but we'll leave it in auto, which would define this uh, with, I guess, where we're, Specifically, add we're out in the open and so on shouldn't be much of a problem, uh, but we'll see. And again, this is for the backup line, and on the on the 60 gigahertz, it's using channel two, and the transmit power also is set to auto. So we're just keeping that as is. Uh, if I want to change this, I got to go to the global settings. <clears throat> and as far as managed device, I can uh, 
Oh, here's the alignment tool. Okay. I'm glad to see this because I thought it was not going to be a uh, uh, any utility such as the ones that, that they have for the other uh, ubiquity ones. Uh, so you just have to enable it. So uh, I got to see where that comes up. All right. So here we have the lights now that the way they show now that we have enabled the alignment tool. I purposely kind of took this one off, seeing the other one face to face. And uh, here we go, we're gonna do this. <clears throat> and I want you to pay attention to the lights. Uh, like right now, they're not aligned. All right, so I'm just, cut. there he goes. I think you can observe really well that now they're both green. If I go off, there we go. This one went off, the other one, not quite. There it goes. It's, it's just telling me, hey, I'm not quite there. So the, the blinking, I don't have a sound feedback, but the light, it's pretty good as far as uh, letting you know, hey, this is out of alignment, this is not. So right there you have both, oopsie. I'm a tad off. So this is the process that you're gonna to have to do on uh, on a pole. Once you're set on the pole, you're gonna to have to fiddle. You're gonna to have to have one person on each side. And uh, let me move it this way. And again, there he goes. Uh, oh, again, I'm just holding it with my hand. All right, this side it looks steady. Seems to be just a little notch. Uh, there we go, right, no, right there. Oh, now I lost it here. It's finicky, but again, I'm not on the pole, I'm moving. So you get the idea. This is how the alignment is gonna have to go. And uh, hey, I like it. And everything else is just a regular Unify uh, related uh, properties. They're there. And uh, here we go. Okay, so here basically we'll get, get to see stats for the access point side and on each of the frequencies 50G, 60G, and last on the station side as well. So we could see uh, what's out there, uh, what's going on, any packet drops, and so on. So that's a good thing. Uh, I think this is going to do what I still don't see is what we just enabled, which was the, the alignment tool. To reach max, uh, max signal capacity, enable the alignment tool as a guide to see if the UVB devices are aimed at each other, correct? Alignment with the result in a solid, with a, res, with a result in a solid green LED. Okay, so that basically the LED seems to be the alignment tool. As you uh, move it around, it would get to a solid green which in theory you should say they're pointed to each other correctly so we're going to test that later uh, but that's basically it right here uh, we're done configuring it upgrading it adapting it and uh, again so, uh, and i said configuring it which we didn't have to do anything we didn't do anything so uh, this is it this is the uvb so that's it for this one we're connected with point to point and the next thing we're going to do is we're going to test connecting a laptop. And uh, also uh, one thing that for me is big is how would an access, uh, not an access point, but uh, also an access point, but uh, which I know already works uh, with the other ones, uh, but uh, 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 ubiquity, uh, a Unify switch, uh, same part of the Unify uh, switches that are managed by the Unify controller. So uh, that's the one that uh, for me would be big. If I can put one, right behind this one. Uh, I need to be able to configure it and also test the speed going through that switch because that's where I've had problems before. So we'll see that later.